Everything you do, every choice you make, every decision in your training room should be about how does this improve the learning. It's the only reason to do anything once you walk through that door, whether it's drawing pictures, using humour, getting people to do activities, asking questions. Everything is about supporting the learning of your group. There is nothing else that's important. It's all about that. So you need to understand how people learn. So in a moment I'm going to go through some general principles which I think are generally agreed, and that's quite tricky these days, about how people learn, and some corresponding mistakes that trainers often make. And I think that'll be a useful way for you to approach it so you can, uh, you can match them up if you like. The reason I say it's quite difficult sometimes to get general principles is I find the more reading I do these days about learning, the more confusing the whole thing gets. Because you come across a lot of things like talk about learning styles. I'll talk about learning styles in a while. I don't talk about learning styles anymore. Um, because you know, learning styles were the big thing at some point. Everyone, everyone sort of comes along and suddenly think, oh, learning styles, people learning all sorts of different ways. That's interesting. Every model of learning styles you'll ever come across, there will be somebody saying, it's rubbish that, you don't take any notes of that. Yeah. <clears throat> and there's a whole industry now growing up, almost challenging every model of learning styles. Somebody will take it apart and say, well, where's the basis for that? No scientific basis. You can get to a point where you're just so confused, you think, well, I don't know what to do. How, does this make any sense? So I'm just going to stick to what I think are fairly practical things that are generally accepted and say, what does that mean for you as trainers? There's a huge amount of interest these days in, like I said, brain-friendly learning and uh, neuroscience. And some of that is very useful and helpful. Some of it isn't. Some of it, again, if you look through some of the forums on LinkedIn, there's a lot of discussion about developments in neuroscience and different parts of the brain and what they do. My question is always, how does that help me in a practical sense? I'm only interested in that if it makes a difference to what I can do in a training room and help people to learn more effectively. I don't care particularly where the corpus callosum is or, what, or <laughs> how that, or the frontal lobes. Particularly, I'm not going to be a brain surgeon. I'm a trainer. I just want people to learn more effectively. So is that telling me something that's of practical value? And sometimes it isn't. It's just information for the sake of it. So I don't want you to get totally confused. So we're going to look at some general principles. See, I thought I had to know all that stuff. I thought I was no, yeah. a bad trainer for not knowing all those sorts of things. It's it's, it's, it can be just totally confusing. Again, yeah, and I went, I went on a training course, a friend of mine did, and it was a whole evening session about different parts of the brain and stuff, and my criticism of it was, well, at the end of it, I thought, so what? And we went around saying, oh, this part of the brain there, and that part of the brain, this is the amygdala, and this is the reptilian brain. I don't, I don't, why do I care? How does it help me? If it helps me, great. If it helps me help people learn, my only function in a training room is to get people to learn effectively. All the things I do, anything I do today or in any other training course, as I say, you can challenge anything I do today and ask why I did that. The answer should be because it, I think it helps you learn more effectively. If it doesn't, there's no reason for me to do any of that. It's all selected because it helps the learning. As I say, anything like you know, using humour, telling stories, drawing pictures, everything you should be questioning, thinking, does that help people learn better? And it may not be that you have a scientific basis for it. It may just be that in your experience that seems to work. It gets people in a better mood. It, they seem to engage more. Fine. The reason you want people to engage more is because they learn better when they're engaged. 